On April 9th of 2019, SpaceX will launch their strongest rocket to date, being the Falcon Heavy. This one being even stronger than the one that they launched last February because it is an upgraded Block 5 version. But this one is also different from their last test launch because it won't be carrying a Tesla Roadster, but rather an actual operational satellite. So what is on board the Falcon Heavy and where will it be going in space? Let's talk about that. So in this video, I'm going to primarily focus on the payload of the mission rather than the actual rocket launch itself. But if you are interested in the launch or the details, it's currently expected to launch on April 9th of 2019, and they do plan on trying to recover all three rocket boosters, two of which are going to try and land on land, and one of which is going to try and land on their drone ship. So that should be something pretty interesting to watch on a live stream, but if you're not able to make it, I will be creating a recap video that goes over what happens that day. But like I said, we want to focus primarily on the payload during this video. So what exactly is the Falcon Heavy sending into orbit? If you recall, the very first Falcon Heavy launch sent a Tesla Roadster into heliocentric space. But in this case, it's not sending a Tesla Roadster, rather it's sending an operational satellite. And this satellite is called Arabsat 6A. Now Arabsat is an organization that tries to improve communication services to Arab nations. And in fact, there are 21 different Arab countries that are shareholders in this organization, with Saudi Arabia being the biggest shareholder or having the largest share in the organization. And you could probably imagine from the name Arabsat 6A, this isn't the very first one for this organization. In fact, the very first one took place in 1985. So this is just the newest satellite that they'll be sending into space. Now this leads us to the question of where exactly is Arabsat 6A going? I mean, most other satellites don't need a Falcon Heavy to get into orbit. Why is this one so unique? And in order to understand this, we should probably first look back to the Tesla Roadster and the very first Falcon Heavy launch. It had enough energy to leave Earth's orbit and go into a heliocentric orbit, meaning a sun-centered orbit. So it had a lot of energy to leave the Earth's grasp. But is this Arabsat 6A going to be leaving Earth, or do we just want it to go somewhere that normally satellites don't go to? And the answer to this is, it's going far away from Earth, but not leaving Earth's gravitational pull. It's going to a special orbit called a geostationary orbit. But what does that even mean? Now I'll explain why this is important in a second, but let me give a quick background of what a geostationary orbit is. A geostationary orbit is a circular orbit around the Earth with typically a low inclination close to zero. The radius of this circular orbit is approximately 42,000 kilometers, and the period of this orbit is such that it's very close to 24 hours, or roughly one revolution of the Earth, or a day. Now, the most important aspect of all those things I just said was that very last part. The period of the orbit is approximately a day. Why is that important? Now we can look at this animation really quick. If we think about it, the International Space Station orbits fairly close to the Earth. It actually goes around 16 times per day, which means it's whipping around the Earth really quickly. But as you get further and further away from the Earth, orbits start to slow down relatively. Technically, they're speeding up, but they're slowing down with respect to their angular velocity. And if they get far enough away, they'll be going at the exact same rotation rate that the Earth is going, which means they will be in a geostationary orbit. But why would such an orbit be useful? Let's think about this for a second. In the case where the spacecraft is very close to the Earth and going around many times per day, it's able to see a lot of different parts of the Earth over its time frame, but very rarely will it see the same part of the Earth. So for example, if it wants to survey maybe Florida or look at how the weather is changing, it's going to have a very hard time seeing what's actually happening because most of the time it won't be looking at Florida, but rather different parts of the planet. But instead, if we go to this geostationary orbit, we can put a spacecraft directly over Florida such that it will always be able to see what's going on. This is actually what is used in the GOES missions that are NASA and NOAA's project. They have different weather satellites that are above the continental United States that track the weather forecast. That is why we are able to see hurricanes or forest fires happening so frequently, because these satellites are always watching over us. 
This is just one of the very few benefits that a geostationary orbit provides to us. And this is also why Arabsat 6A wants to go to them, because they're able to provide constant communication to the Arab nations. It doesn't have to fly over any other countries or locations on planet Earth, but rather it can be placed directly over their Arab countries. And the reason why they're using a Falcon Heavy or a very strong rocket for this launch is because it takes a lot of energy to get into this orbit. If you're just trying to go to the International Space Station, you could do that with a simple Soyuz or Falcon 9. But if you want to be able to get this far away from Earth, then you're going to need a stronger rocket. And in fact, the Falcon Heavy doesn't even get it into the geostationary orbit. It gets it into a geostationary transfer orbit, which is kind of like the halfway or third quarter of the transfer. Now, Arabsat 6A has a mass of 6,000 kilograms, where 2,500 of those kilograms is just the fuel. So this spacecraft is incredibly massive, and that is also why they need the Falcon Heavy, because it will get it into this geostationary transfer orbit, but it's also carrying a lot of fuel that also has to get it from the geostationary transfer orbit to a geostationary orbit. So there's just a lot of energy that's going into sending one of these spacecraft to these orbits. However, once it gets there, it will be very useful in the operation that it'll be able to complete. Now, if we were to compare this to the Tesla Roadster, yes, the Tesla Roadster was able to get into heliocentric space, but that's because the Tesla Roadster weighs approximately one-sixth the weight of the spacecraft. It only weighed around 1,300 kilograms. Now, I know there's a lot of structure connecting the Tesla Roadster to the upper stage, but for the most part, this is still a lot less heavy than the Arabsat 6A, which is why it can't go nearly as far as the Roadster was able to. Now, with all that being said about Arabsat 6A and geostationary orbits, I want to pose a question for you. I've been thinking about what are some useful ways to have this geostationary-like orbit around other planets. Maybe we could put one around Jupiter that is specifically going to be watching its giant red spot. What would you like to keep an eye on in our solar system, or maybe even outside of our solar system? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.